watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Hello, I'm Mark Golub. Welcome to another in our series, Jewish 101, a series that's designed for anyone who wants to learn more about what the basic notions are in terms of what being Jewish is and what the Jewish tradition has to say. If you're somebody who has been part of the Jewish community and you've never had a chance on an adult level to learn about the Jewish tradition, what it teaches, some of the issues that go into being Jewish, this series is for you. If you're somebody who's always had a sense that there's something precious about your Jewish tradition, but you've been unable to identify it or articulate it, even for yourself, perhaps this series will help you learn more about what you've always understood to be true about your Jewishness. Maybe you're someone who's in the process of converting to Judaism, and you're in a Judaism conversion class of your own somewhere in America and this series Jewish 101 will complement what you're doing or perhaps you're simply someone from outside the Jewish community who's always wanted to know more about all things Jewish perhaps you want to know more about the Jewish tradition that is the basis of your own religious tradition this series Jewish 101 is for you and I have to say after our first session there were so many of you who sent me such very lovely emails. Um, I received an email again from uh, members of families who were studying together, uh, people who are in conversion classes. I received an email asking whether I'm going to be explaining what the laws of kashru, or being kosher, is all about. And the answer is yes, that will be part of Jewish 101. And I invite you always to be in touch with me with any questions you may have or thoughts you may have as you listen to this series and experience it with me. But it is a joy to be able to not only teach Jewish 101, but to share it with you. I am very, very appreciative. So we're taking a look at a question that is almost a characteristic Jewish question, which not every community asks about itself. I want to begin Jewish 101 with this question. What is a Jew? What is a Jew? By the way, I'm not asking who is a Jew. I'm asking what is a Jew? And within the Jewish community, that question resonates. There are Jews who are always struggling with the notion of what is the essential bottom line answer to the question, what is a Jew? And uh, it's not about my answer. It's not really about your answer. You have the right to answer that question any way you want. I want to see if we can answer it from within the Jewish tradition. How does the Jewish tradition answer the question, what is a Jew? And if you tend to ask Jews this question, ask people in general this, this question, what is a Jew? Very often you'll get answers like, well, a Jew is a good person. What it means to be a Jew is to be a good person. Very often the answer has to do with religion. Uh, a Jew is a member of a religious group. Uh, very often the identification, the definition of Jew is in some way related to religion. Sometimes you'll hear people say, um, a Jew is someone who believes in God. Again, a religious answer. Or you'll get the answer, a Jew is someone who follows the Torah or loves the state of Israel. All of these are the typical answers you'll also get when you ask the question in general, what is a Jew? But the truth is, the answer to the question, what is a Jew, is a complicated answer, and it's more complicated than the simple answers you normally hear. So what do these people have in common? Menachem Schneerson, who of course was the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Adam Sandler, a movie star, David Ben-Gurion, the first Prime Minister of Israel, the man who read the Declaration of Independence 
of the modern state of Israel. Albert Einstein, perhaps the greatest scientific mind of the 20th century, discovered the theory of relativity E equals mc. Isaac Basheva Singer, wonderful Yiddish writer, Yiddish novelist, Nobel Prize winner. Sandy Koufax, perhaps the best left-handed pitcher ever to play Major League Baseball. Barbara Streisand, an extraordinary voice. It always shocks me when young people don't know who Barbara Streisand is. Louis Brandeis, Supreme Court Justice. And of course, Brandeis University in Waltham, Massachusetts is named after Louis Brandeis. How about this man, Jonah Salk? Do you remember who Jonah Salk was? Jonah Salk discovered the Salk polio vaccine, changed life for Americans by eliminating the scourge of polio. Philip Roth, the controversial author, novelist. Mark Spitz, Olympic swimmer. Golda Meir, again a prime minister of the state of Israel, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence of the state of Israel, and viewed by many as the mother of Israel. Billy Crystal, one of this generation's greatest comics filmmaker. How about this man, Isaac Mayer Wise. Who was Isaac Mayer Wise? Isaac Mayer Wise was one of the founders of Reform Judaism. Abraham Joshua Heschel, a great Jewish philosopher, taught at the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. So a wonderful Jewish activist who was most active in the civil rights campaign in the 1960s. How about this beautiful face? Deborah Messing, television star, Will and Grace, movie star. Mordecai M. Kaplan, colleague of Abraham Joshua Heschel, also taught at JTS, the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, and then created Reconstructionist Judaism. And Mordecai Kaplan is the man who, perhaps more than any other, has influenced the practice of modern Jewish life in every one of the movements of modern Jewry. Here's a face you well know, Mel Brooks a great filmmaker, and then his musical, The Producers, won more Tonys than any other play that ever ran on Broadway. Karl Marx, credited for having created communism. How about this man? Andrew Goodman. Do you know who Andrew Goodman was? Andrew Goodman was the individual who, in 1964, was killed in Mississippi together with Michael Schwerner and James Cheney, all of them Mississippi civil rights workers working in the civil rights movement. And they were all murdered on an isolated road in Mississippi in 1964. Andrew Goodman. Joseph Dov Soloveitchik, the man credited for creating what is known as modern orthodoxy. And this is a face you may well know, Natalie Portman, again a wonderful actress, stage and screen. Natalie starred as Anne Frank on Broadway. Sigmund Freud, the man credited for having created psychiatry and psychoanalysis. And this young man here, Ari Golub, who happens to be my son. 
And of course, most of you can answer the question, what do all of these people have in common? They're all Jews. Even though not all of them believe in God. Many of the people on the list you just saw did not or do not believe in God. Some of them do not have never attended a synagogue, do not, may never have practiced Judaism. Some of them may not even have cared about Israel. Some of them may not even have been lovely, good people. We hope they all were lovely people, but we don't know. But whether they believe in God or not, whether they practice Judaism or not, whether they visited a synagogue or not, they're all Jews. And the Jewish people, all of the Jewish people, tend to take enormous pride in the list of people you've just seen and in any Jew who in some way makes a contribution to culture and science and the world. So what is a Jew? And the best answer, the answer I really hope you take with you from Jewish 101, from the Jewish traditions perspective, a Jew is a member of a family. And what's important to understand is that the word Jew is not a religious term. Jew has nothing to do with religion. In fact, in Hebrew, there is no word for religion. There's no word for religion in the Hebrew language. There's no word for religion in the entire Torah, the five books of Moses. And it's true in Israel. People now use the word dot to refer to religion. And dati is someone who is religious. But the word dot does not mean religious. The word dot means law. And so what has happened is modern Hebrew, in an effort to speak the language of the general cultures, has taken the word observant, dati, and translated it into or used it as the word religious. But someone who is dati is not a religious Jew, but an observant Jew. And the reason why being Jewish is primarily not a religious term, and that being Jewish has little to do with religion, is that being Jewish is not based on belief or faith. Religions are all about faith. Faith-based religion is the essence of what a religion is. Religions are all about, fundamentally, God and being in some way in a relationship with God. And I know this may be surprising to some of you. While Judaism does posit God, there is God in the Jewish tradition. Of course there's God. But part of the genius of the Jewish tradition is found in its understanding that for many people, if not for most people, being sure of God, trusting in God, and the Jewish tradition, by the way, talks about trusting in God, believing in God. But that trusting in God, being sure that there is a God, is for most people, at best, a lifelong quest which every now and then bears some fruit. And even the most pious of Jews, even the tzaddik, the righteous individual, often lives with doubt. And I remember seeing recently, not too long ago, it was actually, I think last year, there was a, uh, the cover of Time magazine said that inside there was a story about Mother Teresa, one of the most religiously spiritual women in all of history, certainly of modern history, this remarkable human being, Mother Teresa, and how in her own personal writings, which were found after she died, Mother Teresa wrote about how she lived with doubt the majority of her life, that she lived without any assuredness inside herself that there's a God at all. And the magazine made this big deal about how somebody as, quote, spiritual 
religious even, as Mother Teresa, and yet she lived her life, most of her life, in doubt. To the Jewish tradition, there's nothing new here. There's no insight here. The great Jewish sages express the exact same idea when they speak about God's hiding from man. This wonderful metaphor that God hides God's face. That metaphor is the Jewish tradition's way of explaining a universal human, human experience. That sometimes even the most pious and observant of people, pious and observant of Jews, live with uncertainty and doubt. And the Jewish tradition is so tolerant of people's uncertainty when it comes to God. For the truth is, when one talks about the God which the Jewish tradition understands to be the foundation and the basis and the energy that permeates the universe, making all life possible, and validating goodness, and above all, which understanding of God is, that there is a real God in this universe, and that God validates our striving to be as lovely and gentle and caring human beings as we can possibly be. When the Jewish tradition speaks of this real God, the Jewish tradition understands that it's speaking of the most difficult reality for any human being, any human being, to truly and completely embrace. And so, contrary to what many people assume or believe, the Jewish tradition does not start with God. The Jewish tradition is not about God. The Jewish tradition is about people. And I want to say that again. The Jewish Tradition is all about people. The Jewish tradition is all about people. Incidentally, if there's one, you know, refrain that I hope comes out of Jewish 101 for you, it's this one refrain. The Jewish tradition is all about people and how each of us treats other people. The Jewish tradition has very little to do with what a person believes. Very little. And I'm not saying that there's no sense of Jewish tradition. Of course there is. But that's not where the emphasis is. That's too private. You're left on your own. You work out how you believe. But it has everything to do with how a person behaves. And this, hopefully, will help you understand what Jewish is really all about. Being Jewish is not being part of religion because it's not an approach to life based on faith or belief. Judaism is a way of living, a mindset, and that's primary, how the Jew is asked to see and embrace life, how the joys of life, and most especially the joys of human relationships, are central to human existence. And then in addition to Judaism being a mindset, a worldview, Judaism is also a way of living life, a set of values, which are then translated into ways of daily living. And that's why being Jewish is not what traditionally is known as religion, as the word is understood, because being Jewish is not based on faith or belief, which is what religion is all about. It's based on deed, on behavior, on a way of living life. And to the Jewish tradition, any human being can be a good person. To the Jewish tradition, one doesn't have to be Jewish to be a good person. All one has to do is treat other people with kindness and patience and understanding to care about their loneliness. To the Jewish tradition, one doesn't have to be Jewish to be close to God or to be loved by God or to receive some divine reward, some form of salvation. All one has to do is be a lovely human being. And we need more lovely human beings in this world. 
That's also why there's no impetus within the Jewish community to proselytize. Jews don't feel the need to convert other people in order to save them. And in fact, the English sense of the word conversion is also not really a Jewish idea. A person does not convert to Judaism because of a wish to change a belief system. When a person converts to Judaism, that person isn't really choosing a, a new or different religion. What the convert to Judaism is really doing is choosing to become part of the Jewish family to become a member of the Jewish people, to bind one's own fate to the fate of the Jewish people, to do one, all that one can to sustain and strengthen the Jewish family. Being a Jew, what a Jew is, is to be a member of a family with family members who live in countries all over the world and who have a family home, an ancestral family home, Israel. And so very often again the instinctive answer is what's a Jew? Member of a religion. No. To be Jewish is to be part of a family with a way of life called Torah. We're a people. We're a family. And when you understand that you understand so much of what drives modern contemporary Jewish life. Why do Jews care about what they care about, even if they're not part of a synagogue community? Because instinctively, Jews understand we're part of a family, and we each care for every Jew all over the world. You know, you don't always love everyone in your family. Or maybe it's better to say you don't like everyone in your family. But they're family, and so you care about them. You take care of them. Why is it that Jews care for other Jews, no matter what country they're in, no matter what color they have? Why do Jews go out of their way to rescue Jews from the former Soviet Union or bring black Ethiopian Jews in, in these huge Israeli uh, airline uh, cargo planes, lift them out of Ethiopia and bring them to Israel? Why do Jews raise money when Argentinian Jews are under assault? Why does every Jew feel a kinship when there's a bombing of a synagogue in France? If you think about it, by the way, and this is in no way a slight against any other religious tradition, churches work differently. The church community has a very powerful claim on its members. This is in no way trying to say one is better than the other. It is to say the Jewish people is not a, quote, church, small c, community. We are a family, and we care for all Jews everywhere. Why do American Jews care so passionately about the state of Israel, even when the vast majority of American Jews feel that this America is our home. We're not making Aliyah, we're not moving to Israel. This is where we belong. But, but, we are committed to the well-being of our family. And our family has a homeland, and it's Israel. Why do Jews care so much about their children leaving Jewishness by intermarrying. And we'll do a whole section later on on, on intermarriage and how it fits into the Jewish, in the Jewish thing and why it is you know, a real problem and why many Jews and even more non-Jews misunderstand the Jewish position about intermarriage. But Jews care about their family and they want their children and their grandchildren to stay in their family. And when one understands that it's all about family, one understands it has nothing to do with race, it has nothing to do with religion. By the way, anybody can become part of the Jewish family. The notion that being Jewish is somehow a racial, um, a, a racial category just doesn't understand anything about what Jewish is. You, know, you can't become 
a member of another race. But anyone who, anyone who wants to can join the Jewish family. And it's easier to join the Jewish family than it is for somebody to become an American citizen. Anybody can be part of the Jewish family. Interestingly enough, Jews don't go around saying, you know, become part of us. There's no impetus, there's no reason within the Jewish mindset to think that another person is less than a Jew because they're not Jewish. And therefore, there's no moral reason, no religious reason, no spiritual reason for a Jew to want other people to become Jewish. We're a family. Anybody who wants to can join us. And if you're not a member of the Jewish family, you're no less of a human being. You're no less loved by God. You have nothing less, except that you're not required to do all of the, what people normally call ritual commandments of the Jewish people. But from the Jewish perspective, it's all about family. Incidentally, if you look in the Torah, again, there's no word for religion, but look at what the Jewish people are called in the Torah, the five books of Moses. Do you know the phrase? Can you think of the phrase that's used to describe Jews in the Torah? And if you say, the B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, and remember, Israel in this phrase is not a place. Israel does not refer to a piece of geography. Israel is the name of the third of the great original Jewish patriarchs. There was Abraham, then there was Isaac, and then there was Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And Israel had 12 sons and one daughter, and each of the 12 sons grew into such a large family of its own that it became a tribe. And altogether, this became known as the children of Israel a family description. And in rabbinic literature, again, a family term is used by the rabbis to describe the Jewish people. And that phrase is Am Yisrael. Am means people in the collective sense. Sometimes it's used as the word nation, but it really means people and a sense of family. So in the Torah, we're B'nai Yisrael, in rabbinic literature, we're Am Yisrael, and both explain how the Jewish tradition views the Jew, not as a member of a religion, but as a member of a family. And incidentally, once you're part of the Jewish family, we don't ever let you go. It's like any nuclear family. You know, sometimes a mother and father have children, and the child says, you know what? I was born a Shapiro. I don't want to be a Shapiro anymore. I'm leaving. I'm going across the country. I'm changing my name. I'm not going to have anything to do with Shapiro-ness. And the mother and the father, that hurts. You weep. You miss your child. But then one day, there's a knock on the door, and the parents open the door, and there's their child again. And the child says, you know, mother, father, I'm such an idiot. I am a Shapiro. I'll always be a Shapiro. Please, can I come back in? The mother and the father. That child is in the door before the words are out of that child's mouth. And that child doesn't have to do anything else to re-become a Shapiro. That child's a Shapiro all over again. And my point is, any Jew who says, you know what, I don't, this Jewishness is silly, I don't want it, I'm leaving. The Jewish people mourn the loss of any person who says, I don't want to be part of the Jewish family anymore. But if one day that Jewish person says, what a silly person I was. Of course I am Jewish and I want to be Jewish and I want to associate my fate with the fate of the Jewish people. That's family. The Jewish history of this family is my history. And the fate of this family is my fate. Now you're talking family. And so there's no re-entry ceremony for a Jew who, for any period of time, doesn't want to be a Jew anymore. Once a Jew, you're in the family. Not about religion. This person could have converted. 
could have become some form of Christian, Christian, could have been a Muslim, could have been a Buddhist, Hindu, doesn't matter. From the Jewish family's perspective, it's a Jew who at the moment is sort of lost. And incidentally, that Jew who leaves has the right to be respected as a human being. But inside the Jewish people's mentality, that person is still a Jew. And if at one point he says, I want back in, the door is open. Come on, and you were and you always will be a Jew. And anybody can join who isn't born Jewish. But once you're born Jewish or once you've entered into the Jewish family, you're part of the family forever. forever. And like every other family, each individual Jew has the right to determine how close or how far, how involved or how uninvolved he or she wishes to be in terms of this sense of Torah, which is at the heart of the Jewish family. And again, the word Torah here has nothing to do with Orthodox Judaism or Conservative Judaism or Reform Judaism or Reconstructionist Judaism or any other brand of Judaism. The understanding of the word Torah, how it's lived, is for each individual, or better said, for each individual family and household to work out on its own. And families do just that. Every Jewish family works out for themselves where they're comfortable in a spectrum of Jewish life, in a spectrum of Torah. Torah does not begin with ritual. Torah does not define a specific set of rituals. Torah begins with values and then a way of living that turns those values into one's essential relationship to others and to the entire world. Other religious traditions begin with what a person believes. The Jewish tradition and Torah begins with how each of us behaves and how we behave and why we so behave is where we'll continue next time as we continue to look at what being Jewish really means from within inside the Jewish tradition. And every one of you watching this series can determine for yourself whether or not the Jewish tradition's values and way of living resonate for you, touches you, speaks to your soul. This, by the way, this series is not meant to convince anyone of anything. It is meant to explain, to articulate, to try to make clear a whole body of information which most adult Jews grow up never having exposure to. Of course, I'd love to hear any of your thoughts to this week's Jewish 101. Please email me or write me this week with any questions or thoughts you might have, and I'll do my best to answer all of you. And so until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends. Thank you.